done. Noah's faith is seen in those who listen to the divine warning of things not yet seen. Wow. You read the Word and study the Word, and if you know anything about Scripture just a little bit, you'll discover that this book is filled with divine warnings. Do I got a witness in the house? Hello? Hebrews 11 and verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. We could take this verse and say, By faith, fountain of life, being warned of Divinely warned of things not yet seen. You know, Noah was divinely warned. And you say, why did Noah build the ark? Did he see storm clouds on the horizon? You know, did he check his weather app and see that a big storm was moving in? You know, did he have a climate specialist that say, it's all about global warming and all of this kind of stuff? No, he didn't. No, no, no to any of that. Why did Noah build the ark? He built the ark because he took God at his word. He listened to the words that the Lord had spoken to him and God had told him, I'm going to destroy the entire earth with a flood. And so God told Noah to build this ark and Noah obeyed. He listened to the divine warning that God had was given that he was going to destroy the earth. Now I want you to understand that this generation, come on, tell your neighbor that's you. You're part of this generation. Amen. Poke your neighbor and tell them that's about you. This isn't about somebody else. Come on. This generation, you and me, we have been given a divine warning. Amen. Many house, most houses in America still have a Bible in them, right? Right? It might be grandma's old Bible up in the attic somewhere. But let me tell you, uh, many people can still remember being raised in the house of the Lord. They got a grandma, an aunt, an aunt, an uncle somewhere that knew Jesus. And we need to understand that this book is filled with divine warnings. You say, well, Pastor Bob, I thought God was love. How many of you know God is love? Let me ask you something. That mother that gets a hold of that child, she found out in the street, and she yanks him off the street, and she tells that four-year-old, I told you don't ever get out in that street. I don't want you to get hit by a car. How many of you think that mother loves that child? Hello? You know what she's doing? She's giving that little child a warning. And let me tell you something. God is so loving. God is so kind. God is so good. Come on, somebody. That he warns the world of what's going to happen. That he warns us that we have to get right with the Lord, that we can't play around. God is so full of love. Come on, somebody. The scripture says that God demonstrated his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God is so loving that he gave us a book of instruction that tells us how to live. You say, well, I like Jesus the best. Jesus the Savior. Because when you see him on the cross, what you see is love. But let me tell you something, that same Jesus, King Jesus, when he comes back, amen, he's not coming, he's coming back, he's going to be coming back as the judge, hello? He's going to be representing the justice of God. Now I'll tell you, in my life, I have made... A very large study of biblical prophecy. And I can tell you that there are many dozens of signs today that point to the fact that Jesus Christ is soon going to come back to this earth. And I don't have time this morning to give you all of the chapter and verse. It would take me uh, several days to do that. But I just want you to understand today that when you see Israel as a nation being talked about on the news, that's a divine sign that there's a God in heaven. Hello? Every time you make a cashless purchase with your card, your debit card, your credit card, 
card with Apple Pay, you realize, my friend, that the technology of today makes possible the, the, the prophecy about buying and selling in the end times. Come on. The Scripture gives us warnings of things that are going to increase in frequency and intensity as we get closer to the coming of the Lord. I'm talking about hurricanes. Has anybody seen any hurricanes around the world in the last several years? Famines will increase. Earth earthquakes will increase. Wars and rumors of wars. Nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Come on. Did you know that what's happening in our world today that there are some parents that are so into this transgenderism thing? And don't misunderstand me. We've got to pray for those people. They need deliverance. They need help. They need Jesus. But how about parents that when their child is born, they won't call that child he or she until that child decides what it wants to be? God, help us today. God, help us today. Let me tell you something. God doesn't make any mistakes. Hello? He gives you the chromosomes and that's who you are. Amen. Did you hear me today? I said God doesn't make any mistakes. Hello? We are what we are and we are created to be what we need to be in our world today. And because of the sinfulness that's upon the world today, the Bible says that creation is beginning to groan. Just look it up yourself. Why is it that all of a sudden you'll see dozens of beached whales. They can't figure it out. They don't know why all these whales would just beach themselves on the side, uh, on the beach. Why is it that all of a sudden dozens of birds fall out of the sky? They can't figure it out. Why is it that sometimes you see harbors filled with fish that have died for absolutely no apparent reason? What am I saying? I'm saying today we better lift up our heads. Come on. Our redemption is drawing nigh. Jesus Christ is coming and what we're seeing is the beginning beginning of sorrows there are groups in Israel that are already right now planning and preparing to build the new temple on the mount <laughs> did you know that our not my pope but the pope and the leader of Turkey just met in opposition to stand against Israel. That was just this week. You say, well, Pastor, what has to happen before the coming of the Lord? Let me tell you, there's absolutely not one more thing that has to scripturally happen before the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. I wonder, are there any believers who are living with one eye on the sky? Come on. Amen. I'll tell you, I believe in the rapture of the church. You say, well, what is that? Let me read about it for you today. In 1 Thessalonians, it says this, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Oh, come on. Hey, my mama's going to come up out of that grave, somebody. Hello. Hey, hallelujah. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then it says that we who are alive and remain. Is there anybody that's alive and remaining today? You know what it says? We're we're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we'll, we shall always be with the Lord. Now, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the rapture is a good thing, right? If you're right with Jesus Christ, amen, that's your blessed hope. We're looking forward to that day. Come on, is there anybody who sat down with a pile of bills or two, and you've sat down looking at stuff, and you say, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Hey, you're just ready. Come on. I don't belong to this world. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. It'd be all right, Lord. You can come about now. Hello? I always pray, Lord, just come after dinner, okay? I just want to eat first. Come on. But I'm going to tell you, can you imagine what it would be like for those who are left behind? Imagine waking up to news reports that millions of people all across the world have been caught up, taken away, disappeared. 
It will throw the world into a panic. Stock markets will plunge, my friend. Nations will crumble and fall. Suicides will be happening everywhere. You do not want to be on the planet after the rapture of the church. And I know that there are people that would say, oh, something like that has never happened before. It couldn't have happened before. I want you to hear me today. God divinely warned Noah of things that had not happened before. Of things that had never been seen before. You hear what I'm saying today? God said, look, it's going to rain. There's going to be a universal flood. And people scoffed and didn't believe it. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people who don't believe in the rapture of the church. But I've got news for you today. One day I'm going to leave these boots here and I'm going to be gone, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. The biggest prayer meeting ever to take place in America will be the day after the rapture. You say, oh, that's good. Whew. I'll get right then. Who are you trying to kid? Who are you trying to pretend with? What kind of spiritual mind game are you pretending to play? Because let me tell you something. If you can't live for Jesus Christ now, hey, when, 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 when there's a group of people that will walk with you, what makes you think that you're going to be strong enough, tough enough to give your head for the cause of Jesus Christ? I'm telling you, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. And I'm going to tell you, that's only the beginning. Amen? The rapture is only the first part. The Bible says that, 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 that speaks of the, a conquest of a world ruler that is known as the beast or the antichrist it talks about seven years of tribulation over half of the world's population will die rivers will turn to blood mountains will fall into the o ocean earthquakes will be like never before darkness will cover the face of the earth hear me today demon like locusts will come up from the deep and their sting will last for six months people will wish that they will be able to die but unable to do it. The Antichrist or the world leader will institute a system of buying and selling called the mark of the beast. And if you do not take that mark known as the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead, you will not be able to buy and sell. And ultimately, that Antichrist will march into the newly built temple in Jerusalem and he will sit down and he will do what the Bible calls the abomination that causes desolation. He will proclaim himself as God and people will come there and they will worship worship him but I want you to hear me today church that, that we've got to understand that now is the time we have been given a divine warning from the Lord today's the day right now's the time it's time to be right with Jesus come on the Bible tells us awake oh, oh sleeper and come out of your sleep because the day is now now is the time to give your life to Jesus I feel it this morning 